This is a case study on shock. Um, Mrs. D, a 54-year-old patient, was brought to the ER by her daughter because of weakness and decreasing levels of consciousness. The patient responds to brief commands to open her eyes and move her arms and legs, but she is unable to answer any of your questions. The daughter tells you that when she stopped by her mother's house today for a visit, Mrs. D was complaining of abdominal pain and back pain. She also was a little bit nauseated and vomited a small amount twice. Although usually she is very alert and oriented, today she seems lethargic and ex became increasingly sleepy. Because of her lethargy, lethargy and nausea, she has not had anything to eat or drink today. Her medical history included hypertension, peripheral artery disease, and diabetes type 2. The do daughter brings in a list of her usual home medicines, which include enalapril, insulin list pro on a sliding scale, and glucopot for metformin, and Lipitor. You obtain and document the initial vital sign values as below. So blood pressure 102 over 38, heart rate of 102, O2 sat is 76. We are not perfusing. Respiratory rate is 40, and her temperature is 102. So, based on the initial history and assessment, which action prescribed by the health care provider will you implement first? Now, scream it out. Let everybody read first. You want to insert a Foley, um, start oxygen, place the patient on a cardiac monitor, and check the blood glucose level. Are you see oxygen? What do y'all say? Two? Oxygen. Yeah. Two is correct. Now remember, shock, everything has to do with no oxygenation getting to the tissues. Okay? So if there's any question and what's putting on oxygen is an answer, I'd lean towards that. Leave your shock question. And what's the, what is the maximum night you can go on, on the nasal canyon? Six. Six. Okay. Six. So which method of oxygen administration oh. will be best to increase Mrs. D's oxygen saturation? She's at 76. Okay, non-rebreather. So what do y'all think? Two, non-rebreather. Um, the other ones? The nasal cannula? Well, no, not that <laughs> Yes, please explain. <laughs> well, it doesn't deliver quite enough, and she's got an up to sat of 76. So, a non rebreather actually administers the most amount you can give. A Venturi mask, it's got the holes in it. Oh, okay. And then it's, don't it have humidification too, or something? The Venturi? I may be wrong. I, don't. Well, I know it's. It can it's or it can't? It can. It I think can. It's got like a little yeah. bag into it. That's yeah. Yeah. And then just a simple face mask, but an on rebreather delivers the most amount yeah. of oxygen yeah. without being intubated. Okay. So, um, available staffing in the ED includes you and an experienced UAP. Which actions will be best for you to delegate to the UAP? So here we are going to delegate. Number one. No, don't say out loud yet. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Not ever 15. Mm -hmm. That's not See. Oh, it is a slow motion. Oh, okay. So it starts to say, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. And they attach the patient to a cardiac monitor. Yeah. Yes. If she's an 
experience and she works in the ED, she's probably used to doing that. Okay. Um, can she document a head to toe assessment? No. 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 Who's the only one that can do that? Arian. An Arian. Me. Just you. <laughs> Just me. Just me. <laughs> Checking orientation and alertness. Sure. That's an orange job as well. Well, could she go? She has to have that skill and work to learn that orientation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, they could. Well, they could, yes. Yeah. But um, inserting an IV line? No. No. Can they monitor the urine yes. output? Yes. So, now, Augie, do you think they can do four? No. I have to, let's see. Vital signs and urine output is in the UAP education. Experienced UAPs will go, can, if they're working in the ER, attach cardi cardiac monitoring. So it does. I mean, yes, they can go in there and go, hey, you okay? But they're not trained in all that. Like, what was the right answer? One, two, and six. So one, two, and six. The cardiac monitor shows atrial fibrillation with a rate of 90 to 114. Routine treatment orders for dysrhythmia are included in the ED protocol. Which action will you prepare to take next? Can we back up just a second, though? Just right there. Like in the captain, it's you know you you're doing assessments. And World three. You're doing interventions. All those fellows yeah, checking the LOC that would be a that would be an assessment, right? Yeah. Uh, but this is a vital signs of an assessment. Measure and interpret. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to put it all together. You know, it's like the Catholic thing. It's like, I'm going to push them all back on this. <laughs> I try to, you know, I can put it together with the book. Since you know, we're back on this, let me ask real quick. Is that talking about a 12 lead monitor? Could a UAP do a 12 lead? Oh, yeah. Well, they do have they yeah. do have cardiac techs that do that. Yeah. That's what I was wondering about that trained. one. I was wondering but it's a specifically a trained. But it would say yeah. a twelve lead EKG. Yeah. That's what it was looking for. Cardiac monitor is just the five lead. Yeah. Okay. One. That's just that monitor that's on the phone. I'm just making sure just, you, you uh, and Jay are okay. Okay, I just like All right, number four. So, atrial fib 90 to 114. Uh, which action will you prepare to take next? No. <laughs> I think I have mine. I don't know if it's right or not, but 
So what do y'all think it is? Go with two. I agree. Anybody else? I've heard two. I've heard three. Y'all always have an answer, and y'all are Why don't I get video of one? Um, the video's on me. Turn the camera around. Uh, well, we're trying to figure out, we're sitting here talking it through, and when we're thinking about AFib, I mean, it's 90 to 140. I mean, that's fast, so. But we forgot the jewels, they're supposed to party over at people. <laughs> so we were thinking 50 was kind of low. And that, that was what we were sitting here talking about. Turn it up. Yeah. But it doesn't say you can do it. Yeah. So. Nope, these are the only choices you get. <clears throat> but I don't. I thought they had like party and stuff for eight days. I don't. I they don't do. Mm -hmm. So, so it's what is them up there? No. Mm -hmm. What's that a denison for? You can see that one. So, have y'all heard me talk about a denison with atrial fib? No. No. But we're just trying to figure out what's going on at the table. For blood pressure. So, no, and Edison is actually for supraventricular tachycardia. Okay. okay. I think it's for something with the heart. And you give it as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. That's the one drug you're going to give as fast as you can, I mean. And it'll actually slow the heart rate way down. It'll make your bottom tight how fast it goes down. <laughs> so, um, low pressure. What does it do? It lowers your pressure. Uh -huh. So, is there anything wrong with the blood pressure? No. You're going to so monitor that between, cardiac rhythm. So, we're between these two? Or the right. cardio pressure. That's the only one I'm comfortable with. Between 90 and 114, so. I would say that you're going to monitor it for. You still just but, I, I mean, I, I would monitor it. Number one is the correct answer. Why? Because 90 to 114. 90 to 114. Now, if this was like 140, mm. 135, something up there, but it bounced around between 90 and 114. And most little old ladies with atrial fib, that's about what they're are anyway. So, now if they said 100, you know, 25 with a blood pressure of 82 or 50, then we need to do something. So, and then the choices would be different. It's usually start off at 100 joules. Okay. Yeah. So, continue to monitor. <laughs> that one was tricky. All right. A, B, G. <laughs> so, you've got a PCO2 of 62. You have a PAO2 of 50. You've got a bicarb of 22, an O2 sat of 87, and a pH of 7.23. What do y'all, what is it? They got respiratory. <laughs> What's the baby's last name? Acidosis. Acidosis. Who else is an acidosis up here? The rain. CO2 is. So it's respiratory. What's that? That's normal, right? Mm -hmm. So it's respiratory. Acidosis. No? So it's uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at my CO2 and my PO2, what does that look like? If I know nothing else about this patient other than I look at the CO2 and the PO2. Mm -hmm. 
you know, to start the meat. A or D S. I did learn something. <laughs> Good, because I taught that. <laughs> That's what I missed. Did what? That's why I missed that one. That's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Based on the ABG values, which collaborative in intervention do you anticipate? Y'all want to get back off? No. Not, you no. would for metabolic, but not. We did only did that I've seen when we had the code. So, if it looks like they're going into ARDS, what's the only thing you can do for ARDS? Into the Put on the ventilator. Would we want to continue to monitor her respiratory status? Oh, yeah. We'll continue to watch her die if we don't do something. Oh, I thought you meant won't you? <laughs> All right, six. You're preparing to assist with endotracheal intubation of Mrs. D. In which order will these actions be accomplished? Get out your little ink pens. That's one reason why I was still at home, because I was doing these questions. So I, I wouldn't look. Too dumb to <laughs> These will be on board. Okay. Uh, I'm, no, I'm gonna. If he's gonna write it down, I thought I would work with him since I'm doing this and see if we agree. <laughs> Is that okay? Let me get you a little ink pad, a little pad of paper. I don't care. Yeah, just don't say it out loud. I'm not. Yeah. I don't plan on it. Do you want me to give you this paper? You write. I'll agree. <laughs> Shut up. Go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> That's close. I'm going to let you talk out loud for the rest of the time. There's the answer to the question. Do what? I said, if you would just go, I would have let you say the answer to the question for the rest of the time. I'm sure. I wouldn't have been able to. Y'all would have probably had to took me to the it's okay. AR. Don't worry, we're, we're almost there. <laughs> we know what to do. Yeah, I know. By that, we mean Amy. <laughs> Amy's oh, here. Nina. We're okay. Oh, no, Nina oh, was pointing at herself. She was like, I would do this. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Amy and Nina are here. Okay, so we're okay. I'll call my mom. You got this. I'm trying to. Thank you. And 
hoping they do, or respiratory does. But don't read it. Just take it on the face value. When Eva gets this on English, she's going to ask for some of the blank eye on the doctor. Pass the buck. <laughs> Pass the buck. <laughs> well, it doesn't say, it says you are preparing to assist. Mm. So which order what will is the actions be accomplished? I've never seen one of those. It doesn't say which order is the nurse going to do them. Hey, the capnography, I understand that it's like checking for carbon dioxide. I've never seen one. I don't know what it is. So. It runs into the real, it runs into the, it's part of the telemetry. It runs in it. Yeah. It's got like a yeah. little thing. Oh, is that that little thing that hangs? Yeah. I know what that is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who's texting? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I did, it went off too fast. Yeah. All right, what are y'all going to do first? Well, I'm going to briefly explain right. it to the explain patient the and dog. Okay, so number five. So now what are we going to do next? She's going to be Well, yeah, that's what I put. Okay, so we're going to do Four. Four. Then mm -hmm. so five, four. Then three. Then a pre-lock eight. Three. Yep. Then nine. Then nine. Yep. Then thirty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. Then put the plate of cuff six. That's five. That's five at two, Michael. Six. Then seven. Then seven. That's where it sounds. Then two. Two would be last, but... I'm confused. Eight. I'm confused You're going to have to do eight. eight. I'm confused on seven and the, the I put seven two, but I'm confused if I need to tape it before. Yeah, I don't know where it tapes. I actually went after seven. I went to one. I'm looking up to check the CO two. Then I'm gonna tape and then last do a radio breath. Okay, so uh -oh. check okay. So, so I seven two one eight. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm So it was like one and two. I wasn't sure what order. So, so is this opposite? Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm right. I'm just. Okay, so that's we were saying, right. That's where I was. Seven, yeah, eight. 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 That tape, I don't know. Where two is like one, two, two. No. Yeah. He's saying oh. that's what he's saying. Well, we said, I got off. We don't yes. know either. Okay. I put the capnography last. Um, back, well. Back when, we didn't have that. Yeah, okay. Was you right or were you wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. So the answer is let's see, six, five, four, three, nine, six, one. See, one is the answer. That's what threw me off. Yeah. The, so we was right up Because yeah. I guess, so then when I got to thinking about it, though, if you test for cap, if you actually get carbon dioxide, you know you're back. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, and then seven, and then two, and then eight. Okay. So the capnography kind of throws you off, but at least that will tell you. Yeah. You're there if you've got CO2 coming out. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And that just confirms placement. Yeah. And that it's where it should yeah. be, you know. Not keeping things up. I know, those are hard. Yeah, those are. All right. After the successful intubation, you perform a rapid assessment of Mrs. D and charge her findings. Heart tones irregular and distant, face flushed and warm, extremities cool and mottled, radial pulses faintly palpable, pedal pulses unpalpable, non-palpable, breath sounds audible bilaterally with crackles present in left lung base, grimaces with light abdominal palpation above pelvic bone. Urine is amber and cloudy with red streaks, 100 milliliters of urine output with Foley catheter inserted. Opens eyes and moves to command. Pupils equal round reacted to light. The patient's current vital signs are blood pressure is 80 over 40. Heart rate is 112. 
O2 set is 93, respiratory rate is 32, and temperature is 103. Which information in your assessment requires the most immediate action? <laughs> Which requires immediate action? That's what I was thinking. That's I chose three first, but then I'm like, if you fix four, then mm -hmm. will that not fix three? Yeah. So, so, so four. four. Four is the correct answer. That makes sense. Look, Good job. Yeah. I wrote three. Yeah. 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 Well, I was so sitting there and I was thinking that, well, if we increase the blood pressure, that's going to mm -hmm. help the pulse. So, yeah. We all do good. We can just have you to walk us through the questions on the desk. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. I'd be y'all read y'all reader, please. Mm -hmm. Mrs. D is admitted to the intensive care unit with a diagnosis of probable sepsis and septic shock. Which data that you have collected in the health history and physical assessment are significant in developing and confirming the diagnosis of sepsis and septic shock? So like all that apply. Okay. okay. So y'all Get your numbers written down. Y'all so you know how to answer select all that apply? True, false. Each, take each statement as a true, false, or a yes, no. Each statement one at a time. Don't try to answer them all at once, you know, like lump them all together. So, like, just an example, increased temperature, yes or no? I mean, that would be a yes. Okay, I think I got them. I think that's too many to choose, so I don't know. Yeah. Don't go with that thinking. That is bad thinking. Yeah. I think these are <laughs> Increased temperature, true or false? True. Yes, true. true. <coughs> Atrial fibrillation, false. false. Okay. Cloudy blood streaked urine, true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Decreased blood pressure, true. Mm -hmm. Why is that true? Because she's. Well, don't even go back and look at that. But why would somebody in shock or, sept or septic shock have a decreased blood pressure? Because, well, it's all, because it's all in the middle, right? And that where all the fluid goes. Because they're all. I don't know. What Michael said. What'd you like, say? Yeah. Phase of dilation. Yeah. Phase of dilation. Yeah. So you got pooling. So everything yeah, just pools. Everything's pooling down there. Or all around. So, so it is still one drop. Huh? One drop. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was. You know, oh, okay. I was just making sure. I was just making sure that you weren't. Just making sure that you weren't so, decreased blood pressure because in septic, it's all cool. that autoimmune, it's like anti-inflammatory stuff, not autoimmune, anti-inflammatory, all that stuff comes out and everything cools. So now, would they have an elevated heart rate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why would their heart rate be a... Because it's trying to compensate for that decreased blood pressure. And also, not only that, but they've got really high temperature. Yeah, and any time you have that. Now, abdominal pain and back pain? No. No. Okay. History of diabetes? No. Yeah. Well, no. Is that a risk it's so, risk factor was that which, if it comes out like a it's significant in developing and I know what you're talking about the diagnosis of septic shock. No. 
the history of it? No. Would it? Well, it's a risk factor, but it's not a risk factor, but it's not a diagnosis thing. Because what he was saying, like patients that don't normally have um, diabetes, that they will have 150, above 150, but I think. But the new diagnosis or something. Or, cool. Yeah. So, so is that, history is that of diabetes answer? would be correct. So, so it is, is correct. Yeah, seven that's is, where I'm, yeah. Seven is part? Yeah. Because the whole reason why she actually I know went why. into it is because she it makes, nausea, the vomiting, she was throwing up, she had a UTI going on mm -hmm. apparently. So all it, that led to that septic, or sepsis and then septic shock. In which that excess glucose also makes a breeding ground for the organisms to keep growing. So if you see something like a risk, risk factor and it says developing a diagnosis, you should choose that if it's a risk factor. Mm -hmm. For diagnosis. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but diabetics are such a I was thinking diet I was thinking diagnostic criteria is what I was So so this is so significant in developing. Since okay. they, since I'm the diabetes sorry. puts her at a risk factor, that is part of the answer. Yes. Okay. You got it. Now they actually yeah. say six: the abdominal pain and back pain. Where's that coming? I mean, I have well, a I, back pain. I had thought that I had. I have back pain. I'm not. I'm not, not saying that. The, but <laughs> the back and abdominal pain. Listen. Listen. The back and abdominal pain point to a urinary tract infection oh, okay. or pyelonephritis as the cause of sepsis. So it's but an answer not, as but well? Can we not get that from the cloudy blood and shrink urine? Well, yeah. But, but that could be... But you also have... Yeah, you know, back pain. So back pain was... So six was an answer. So, so I had that right. right. I thought it was... I just don't I don't like the number six or not. I mean, I'm going to be honest. If I'm going through and going true or false, like, I'm like, I have abdominal pain sometimes. But I'm, what I'm saying is, maybe. I mean, not usually, but like what I'm saying is. Well, I'm having you, it right now, but it's. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're in the ER and the people come in and say, oh, my stomach and my back hurt. It's like, your, your first thing isn't sepsis or septic shock, as would be. The rest of it. Do you get, do you get my thinking? I'm like, I flash up on it. Because I went through and did the true false on it, and that true. was a that was a false. But that was it, right here. We're also just talking about specifically to that Mrs. Person. D. Not just you. Yeah. This isn't just like. That's why this is a it's a case study. Now some of the other questions that we'll go through, they're all they all stand alone. Okay. So this one. So don't. So if this didn't have to do anything, like if we were just not, if it didn't say SSD and it was talking about all of these things, and then you said this patient like this, these, and then which of these would give you a diagnosis or make you whatever well, what, thing? What, okay, if we didn't know anything about a patient, yeah, a patient just okay. What are the? How would you know that they have sepsis? Just name. Fever, hot heart rate, increased blood pressure. I would choose the cloud your blood sugar because yeah. there's the proof well, of that infection. Well, that is just right. And then the history, but I wouldn't choose abdominal and back pain is what I'm saying. Okay, with the cloudy blood sugar urine, what are you thinking right then? A UTI. Okay, so what are the symptoms of a UTI? <laughs> Well, but, the main, but the main ones of any kind of shock are, would be, or septic shock because it's due to a Bacteria would be the increased temperature, the decreased blood pressure, and the elevated heart rate. Which I think all of the shocks have decreased yeah. blood pressure and yeah. an elevated heart rate. I was thinking of so that, like cardiogenic would not right. have an increased yeah. temperature. Yeah. I was That's thinking of the diagnostic cardiac. symptoms of shock we've gone over in the book, yeah. which back pain and abdominal pain was listed, I don't think. Well, it's not because this is specific for Mrs. D only. This question. Right. So if it wasn't Mrs. D, what she's saying is, would we still choose? We that? didn't know. We'd okay, we that's just choose temperature, blood pressure, and heart rate. Oh, so that's all shot. If it wasn't Mrs. D, would you pick D. diabetes if it wasn't specific to Mrs. D? Mm -hmm. Well, we are beating this question to death. Mrs. <laughs> we read yeah, way that's more that's into it. Yeah. If the question is worded like that, I would because it's asking. Is the assessments are significant in developing, so I mean, that's a risk factor. History of diabetes is a risk factor for developing sepsis. We would pick things that are risk factors. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
But if it just said what are signs and symptoms of shock, of septic shock, then it'd just be increased temperature, decreased blood pressure, and elevated heart rate. Okay. Makes sense. Which that's all of them except for the elevated temperature goes with just septic shock, right? It wouldn't go with necessarily hypovolemic or cardiogenic. Did y'all go over all those other shocks? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. For this test that's coming up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't all just septic and. No, coming okay. over all shocks. Shock, shock. Number nine. Because the ICU is short staffed, the nursing supervisor begins, or nursing supervisor assigns you to follow Mrs. D to the ICU and care for her there. In which order will you implement these interventions that have been prescribed by the health care provider? So which order? So you have to make a list. Is this a select album? No, it's a put in order. Put it in order. Oh. Prioritize. They all apply. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Now, this is talking about Mrs. D, right? She's got low blood pressure and all that. Okay. So, what would, you, and she's diabetic. Mm -hmm. So, what are we going to do first? What do y'all think? Draw the blood for culture fluids. or fluids? Fluids. Well, fluids. see, I thought the fluids, fluids but then I was like, well. <laughs> fluids is first. Okay. Anytime anybody's in like DKA or HHNS, their problem is. Fluids first. Because you want to prevent them from going into shock. It's too late for her, she's already there, but she still needs the fluid. Right. So, so then what would you do? I, I put I four. I titrate the other lab video. Fluids aren't holding her. I'm going to use the <laughs> She's pretty well there. So number three, and then number, I put four on this because I thought the blood pressure was yeah. serious. Yeah. So you need yes. to get the blood pressure. Yeah, get the blood pressure. If fluids don't work, you can't. Yeah. So three, then four, and then what are you going to do? I put, I put one. I just put it on blood cultures, which I guess the Tylenol would maybe. You can't ever give Tylenol before you draw blood cultures. Okay, so you have to draw to blood cultures first. Yeah, you're not allowed. You can't give Tylenol. And so then you'd give the Tylenol. And then I put two five. Well, now we're going to be giving the bank until we get those blood cultures back, right? Huh? Yeah. Because it's a broad spectrum. The last thing I do is Tylenol. So then we're going to give the bank of myosin, right? Yeah. And then what are we going to do very last? Tylenol. Tylenol. Oh, so you get the Tylenol? Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, y'all see that? So you're going to do the fluid and then you do the blood pressure? Because they are, she's dry. And the third one is? The third one is then draw the blood cold. Blood cold. Because right. you have to get the blood cultures drawn before you can give. Sorry. 
When it's like real bad. When you see them, it's like you start um, frothing the mouth. And then you see the jugular vein distension. That's cold. Who wants to see this? Of course. <laughs> this jugular vein dis distension ain't going to kill them as quickly as this. Fluid alone. So. 11. Okay. When you recheck the dopamine drip, which I don't remember us even putting her on a dopamine drip. No. When I was reading it before, I was like, Oh, anyway, apparently we started dopamine drip. You notice that you have miscalculated the dopamine dose and have mistakenly set the rate at 20 miles per kilogram per minute. Which action should you take first? After you've done sucking all the oxygen out of the air and um, <laughs> had to get... <laughs> The, well, you're gonna. The first thing you're gonna have to do is assess for the toxic effects, but then you're gonna have to notify the physician of the error. Why stop the drip? Not an option. Have you done it wrong? Well, I mean, it ain't. Lower it. <laughs> yeah. Um, time up. Thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel, I feel like y'all have different answers for this. Well, I, I've, I've so got it down to two. Yeah, I say one. I'll say one. Only because stop the medication is an answer. I think you need to assess them first. I always assess first. That's what I'll Number do. one is correct. You need to assess first. And then you would call the doctor. Because then he's going to then then you just gonna, go call. He's going to be like, say, well, are they all right? <laughs> Are they dead? Okay. Yeah. You're going to be like, oh, I don't know how they're looking. <laughs> well, this one I live in. Trying to pass out resumes at Domino. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 I'll take the picture. <laughs> we don't need one, right? Let's see. Which patient finding is most important to report to the health care provider regarding the error in the dopamine infusion? Even if you don't know anything about dopamine or its side effects, out of those four, which one makes your bottom the tightest? Well, there's two that does. <laughs> the respiratory rate and the heart rate. Yeah. All right, so we've narrowed it down to two and four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. 
sinus, if they're in sinus, that would be safer. The 44 breaths per minute is not. They're not in. They're not in ventricular. Yeah, they're not. They're but they could go there. I would choose too, because can't you just get fluids for four? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Do you can. No, if you get their breathing to slow down, their heart rate's probably going to go down a little bit too, yeah, wouldn't that's it? That's really hot. Well, no, the dopamine's probably doing that. Yeah. You tell us yeah. that's right. Sorry, yeah. I mean, we're just yeah. rationalizing yeah. it all over the place here, so. I thought the respiratory rate is set on the It is. But if they're on they that. They over it. Yeah, they can. So if they're uh, breathing over if they're there. they're really fighting it. The that's going to put them in alcohol. Four. Okay. Well, good. Our sinus tape was not a good answer. Is the nurse. You don't want the heart rate to that bad. Yes. Why? Tell us why. If it is at 156 for too long, then it can start going into other Be-time. rhythms. Okay. So, um, number or number two is second best. Okay. That's all I'm always good at picking second best. Your insurance couldn't afford the first the best nurse. You got the second best. Right. This <laughs> even I put up with this. Right. <laughs> Make sure I'm air. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, that's what, that's going to be me. Uh, I don't know as good as you get. Yeah. What are we doing? When you get Miss Thomas to write you a reference, I'll tell her to be sure that you're the second best nurse. Thank you. That's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm not third. <laughs> well, at least I narrow it down. <laughs> we're just thinking about this time. <laughs> Honey, we'll walk that walk together because I'll do uh, the same thing. Yeah, you don't want us to. The heart rate always. They handle any real dangerous things. More disturbing than the respiratory rate? Or is it just the levels we see here? Um, well, I would. Well, 156 states with four. I mean, they both yeah. are upsetting to me. Yeah. But I, at least I know that they're on the ventilator, but that dopamine has also, if you know what right. dopamine is at all, I mean, it's not a, it's a blood pressure medicine. Right. So if they're getting too much of it, then I know that their heart rate's going up, and that's not good for them. So, but just a heart rate in general of that high would make me a little bit more worried than a 44. Not like either one. Uh, that's like because when I was turning. This can go into, it could go into SVT or VTAC or something else. Whereas this, they're going to go into respiratory alkalosis. Right, that's what I was thinking. But, but, you know, they're also, it even says here they're on the middle end. Yeah. So we can kind of calm that down. That's, that's I know, I had so a patient that was far, on right? the vent and we had to turn him and his so it was so difficult for him his heart rate would shoot up into like the 130s and get close like to 140 and it that would make me nervous because he had already coded twice so we didn't want to go there again. Um, now we can give him that adenosine but just in this question yeah we have to stop that dopamine okay so if there wasn't if there wasn't dopamine going and the heart rate was up, then we'd have to figure out why the heart rate was up that high anyway. Right. Stop it. And if we can't figure it out, then we might be giving that a dentist that we talked about earlier. Okay. In my six. Sure. Hey, do you know I said know, that to I somebody the other day? <laughs> I told somebody that at the hospital, like six makes the world go around. That's like, you're right, it does. Did they say, oh, you got Miss Pat? No, she was older. No. Yeah, I'm old. No, not that old. You are working with an experienced <laughs> LPN in caring for Mrs. D. Which nursing activity included in the plan of care can be delegated or should be delegated to the LPN? Okay. So now this is different from the Select UAP. All that apply. So this is select all the fly. What can the LPN, what can you delegate to the LPN?
remember, this is NCLEX World LPNs. What do they do? <laughs> a lot less. A lot less? Okay. These are not what you have seen in practice. Oh. You can't do that. So, can they do number one? Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, they can yeah. do number one. Can they do number two? Yes, I would think so. They can't do that. Who said no? Did you? Why'd you say no? Huh? Number three, can they monitor the dopamine infusion site for signs and symptoms of extravation? Well, I think so, but are they even allowed to do dopamine? <laughs> That's yeah. my thing. They're, just They're monitoring that. They're just monitoring the signs. Oh, uh, well. They can. That's assessment. That's assessment. So they can't do that. So it's true and answer. So they're not allowed to assess. They allowed to call? No, they can't do any assess. So which assess, ones so far? Oh. Where you say yes? Okay. One, we're going to hold out on number two. Oh. We're going to hold out on number two. Number one, they can do. Number three, no, because it's an assessment thing. Okay. Plus, that's a vasoactive infusion, right. and they don't do that. Okay. So. Now remember, this is NCLEX work. Not what you've seen in practice. Oh. Well, in that case, then. Around these parts. <laughs> I can't do this one, then. Now, um, can they administer sliding scale insulin? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Every six hours? Yes. yes. Can they complete and document a head-to-toe assessment every four hours? No. 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 Can they monitor blood pressure and titrate dopamine to keep systolic blood pressure at no. 100? No. No. Why do they do number So now we're going to look at number assessment. two. Yeah. So. so we're going to look at number two. <coughs> Notifying the laboratory after giving gentamicin so that gentamicin peak level can be measured. Well, gentamicin is an IV antibiotic. So they're not allowed to give that? Oh. Okay. So, um, so let, me say what number, let me tell you what number 13 says. Okay. Let's see. One, what did we come up with? One and four, right? Pretty much. Oh. Here's what it says. LPNs are educated and licensed to perform tasks such as monitoring and documenting intake and output, bedside blood glucose monitoring, and administering insulin under the supervision of an RN. Although LPNs can collect data about patient actions such as administering IV antibiotics to critically ill patients and monitoring for therapeutic adverse the effects of vasoactive medications require more education and RN level skill. Oh. Huh. If they're doing a, a, an, an, an assessment every four hours, if it's not the initial assessment, oh, it says assessment. Okay. All right, this is the Sorry. And plus, we're we're talking about Mrs. D, so they, all these questions mm -hmm. keep okay. relating to right. So she's critically no. ill, so they can't. Yes. They can take blood pressures and record. Mm -hmm. But if it says, like, monitoring, then I'm supposed to think more of an assessment where they're making an evaluation about it. Now, don't write that in stone. Okay. So I know we want to make it black and white. Okay, right kind of have to go with what the question is asking in this specific situation. Each test question, you're going to have to, how do they mean monitoring here? But usually, I would think monitoring would be actually assessing, right? It's more than just recording. It's, okay. It's me. So. All right. The ICU intensivists arrive to examine this D and inserts an arterial line and pulmonary artery pressure line, a swan gans. Who's seen a swan gans? Uh, maybe in the picky or the yeah. Is that what they do? Like, I don't know. What's the thing that they have attached? Comes out of their neck. Yeah, yeah. that's the whole mouth of the bone type thing. 
it's a catheter that's actually yeah. threaded yeah. through their heart. Yeah, we did. After a few hours, the dopamine drip has been decreased to 11 mics per kilogram per minute, and there are orders to titrate the dopamine drip to keep the systolic blood pressure 100 millimeters of mercury or higher. Mrs. D is receiving an infusion of normal saline running at 200 milliliters an hour. The current values for vital signs and other parameters are as follows. So her blood pressure is 104 over 56. Her heart rate is 104. Her O2 SAT is 95. Her PA systolic is 15. Her PA diastolic is 2. And her wedge pressure is 2. Respiratory rate is 26. And her temperature is 101. So, which information about Mrs. D is most important for you to communicate rapidly to the intensivist? I don't understand like the wedge pressures and stuff. Was that like explained to it to me? <laughs> That's just the easiest way to say it. I know that I would be concerned about the temperature remaining high, but not knowing enough about those pressures. You know. <coughs> so now her communicate rapidly to the intensivist. So Decrease blood pressure. Oh. What is her blood pressure now? It's 104 over 56. Isn't that better than what it That's was? That's much better. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good. So ongoing atrial fibrillation? It's fine. Okay. It's still that. She's still breathing. Um, low wedge pressure? Well, that's awful low. <laughs> Whatever it's supposed normal to, because normal is 6. Normal is 6 to 12. Yeah. It's now, good. continued temperature elevation. It's not elevating, it's going down, isn't it? Yep. So it would be the, the only, wedge pressure. Okay. The only thing y'all have left is the wedge pressure. Right. The wedge pressure actually tells how much fluid is left in the heart. Okay. It's a pressure gradient, pressure measurement, how much fluid is left in there. So a wedge pressure should be 6 to 12. So if their wedge pressure is only 2, then that tells me there ain't enough fluid in that heart. So they're still dry. Even though they're get, she's getting 200 milliliters an hour. And this is a little old woman, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. For a little old woman. So number 3 is the wedge pressure. So even if we didn't know anything about the wedge pressure, do you see how we figured it out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Before calling the intensivist, you quickly look at Mrs. D's latest lab <coughs> test results, which have just arrived on the unit. Her hematocrit is 32, hemoglobin is 10.9, platelet is 96,000, white blood cell count is 26. BUN is 56, creatinine is 2.9, glucose is 330, potassium is 5.2, and sodium is 1. Which laboratory value requires <coughs> the most immediate action? Potassium. Potassium. Does everybody agree on potassium? Wrong! Are you serious, really? Glucose is in. It's the glucose. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention to the glucose. <laughs> I fell for the same sucker hole. I went straight okay. to potassium. You went to potassium. <laughs> then I was like, wait a minute. That's just 5.2. Yeah, 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 if it was yeah, 7.5. Right. Yeah, 330 is a bit much for glucose. And even though the BUN is really high, mm -hmm. we can't. Um, I mean, what? We can call the doctor. What's he gonna say? 
<laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, best thing, best answer there is three, or three or even the creatinine level. They can't, you can't do anything until she gets the fluids in there. Yeah. Right. So that's because that's why it that's is so high. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm.